Welcome and congratulations on your purchase of the Focus EMG machine. This is a sophisticated two-channel EMG machine that fits in the palm of your hand. One thing it does not have, it does not have its own independent power supply. Why? Because we wanted you to have the least artifact and interference that you can have during your study. It draws its power from your laptop via your simple straightforward USB cable. This is why we call this machine the machine for the rest of us. I'm going to go over some of the functions of this machine and go over some of these buttons and knobs that you see and then we're going to go over each and sing every single one of them for the different tests that it's capable of doing. The button that I like the most, I have to admit, is this one here, the Z button. No, that's not for sleeping. This is for impedance checking. What does that mean? Anytime you're doing a test, you can have good or bad electrodes. When you have bad electrodes, it really interferes with your performance of the test. You change electrodes, you take more times, and so forth and so on. So one of the most important things as you are starting to do a test is to find out if your electrodes are good or bad. This is what this button does. When you press on it, there are these lights that come up. When, when these lights come on, they will tell you if your electrodes are good or bad. Uh, these lights will come on if you're working with channel 1. These lights will come on if you're working with channel 2. And this light will always come on because this is the ground electrode. If all of your electrodes are working properly, these three lights will light up green. If you're using channel 1, if you're using channel 2, these three lights will come on green. But if one of your electrode is not working correctly, one of these lights will come out orange, and if the electrode is not good at all, that light will be red. So if the light comes up red, you either don't have your electrodes pasted on the patient, or if you have them pasted, that means it's not working. Get rid of it. If they, are, if they come out orange, that means it's probably not stuck properly. If you press on it, that will fix it. So bottom line, whenever you put the electrodes on the patient, press that button to make sure that the impedance and that the electrodes are working properly. Let me go over some of these other buttons and knobs and then we'll go over them in detail afterwards. The first one I want to go over is this one for the test. That's very interesting because each time you're doing a new test you have to go to a new mode and so forth and so on. This makes it far easier. Just by pressing this forward button it goes to the next test this backward button it goes to the previous step for instance if you're doing an upper extremity testing and you're starting with the median nerve and you're done with that you press on this it will go to the ulnar press on it again it goes to the radial let's say you want to go back and see what the median looks like you press on this button here and it goes to the median and then you press on this button here it takes you back to where you were before again if you're still doing nerve conductions uh, to get started with the stimulation, you press on this orange button that starts the stimulation, and then you start increasing the stimulus until you get a nice response. Once you have gotten a nice response, and you want to store that response, you press this green button. This green button stores the response. That's for nerve conduction studies. You see this knob here? This is the one that controls your stimulation. So as you rotate it clockwise, you increase your stimulation intensity. As you rotate it counterclockwise, you decrease your stimulation intensity. By the way, if you press down on this button, not rotate it, it will give you volume control. So you increase the volume or you decrease the volume. Now, let's look at this button here. Let's say that you increase the stimulation intensity as much as possible, but you're still not getting a good response. By the way, don't try that on the sensory because you are going to get a lot of artifact. This button will, will increase the duration of the stimulus. This way you get more stimulus delivered to the patient. This knob here controls the sensitivity. You can increase the sensitivity or decrease the sensitivity to be able to see the potential better. This knob here will control the sweep speed to increase the sweep speed or to decrease the sweep speed. This knob here, the machine is going to put cursors on your potentials. This knob allows you to move the cursors and position them in place that you want to position them. Let's look at a couple of other 
buttons here. You get the sigma button here. What that does, if you're working with the sensory potentials and you're not getting a good response and you want to average it, you press on this and it will average it. Now, there's a few other buttons here. This one here, the play, this is for the needle exam. Whenever you're starting to do the needle exam, you want to start to see the sweep. You press on it, it will play the sweep. If you want to pause, you press on this one here, it will pause the sweep. And then if you want to start acquiring the needle exam potentials that you see, you press on this button, it will acquire it. Once you're happy with them, you press on this one and it will store. So now let's go to each different function. Let's look at the nerve conduction studies buttons, the one that you're going to use the most frequently. So again, I'm going to go back here over the impedance check. Make sure that your electrodes are good when you position them on the patient. Um, and then we're going to go over the specific buttons and knobs that you're going to use for the nerve conductions. Notice here all these arrows that tells you about the function of these knobs. For instance, in this knob here, if you rotate it, you increase the stimulus intensity. If you press down on it, it's for the volume. This is here for the stim duration. This here is for the sensitivity. These, these two, three buttons here, they don't have a press down function. It's mostly only rotation. Uh, this here for sensitivity. This one here is for the sweep speed to change it. And this is to positioning cursors on your waveform. So for nerve conduction studies, once you have the electrodes on and once you've pressed this impedance button to make sure they're okay, to start the stimulation, you press this orange button here. You're going to get a stimulus that's delivered to the patient. The patient feels it. And you're going to see a waveform on the screen. As you start seeing the waveform develop, getting bigger and bigger, you're going to increase the stimulation here to increase the stimulus so that you get a bigger waveform so, and that you know that you stimulated the nerve maximally. Once you have reached the maximal stimulation, the next step for you is to press on that green button to store it. Now you know that you have stored this potential and you're not going to lose it if you want to go to your next stimulation site. So basically, let's recap briefly the nerve conductions. You check the impedance. Uh, you, whenever you get started first, the first nerve comes up. To go to the next nerve, you press next, 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 next. And then if you want to go back, see another nerve that you've done before, you go to previous. You press on the NCV stimulation start button to start your stimulation, increase the voltage and the intensity from here. Once you like it, you press on the green button here to store it. If you're having problem with the sensory potentials, you press on this button here to average it. And that's it for the sensory potentials. If you're doing a motor nerve conduction study, the same thing happens here. You start the stimulus here and you store it when you get a good response. So let's say you started the stimulation of a nerve at the wrist for the median nerve. Once you got a good response, you press the green button to store it. And then you can go and do the elbow. For the ulnar nerve, you could do above and below the elbow. So once you store it, it allows you to either go to the next nerve or go to the next site. Now let's, let's say that you're going to want to do an F wave. You get into the F wave mode and you start pressing on this orange button to stimulate and get a good F wave response. Once you have done that, you need to give several F wave responses. Most labs will tell you about 10. In order to do that, you press on this button, which says averaging, but actually it does F wave as well. And this button will start acquiring F waves and store them for you. Once you're done for that, you press on this green button and that stores it. Same thing for the H reflex. You press on this button here and you start acquiring H reflexes. Once you're happy with the, ref with the responses that you got, you press on this and that will store it. And that's it. Now let's say that you want to do a needle exam. These are the buttons that you will use to do the needle exam. First of all, again, impedance check. Uh, you're doing an upper extremity, lower extremity. You start with the first muscle, then you press next 
to the next muscle, next muscle. You want to see another muscle you tested previous. Same thing as we did before. Uh, in order to start the sweep, uh, when you're doing the needle exam, you press the play button that starts the sweep and you can see the potential spontaneous activity, interference patterns, and so forth and so on. If you want to pause it, you click on this button, on this pause button, it will stop. Then you want to continue it again, you press on the play button. Now, if you want to acquire the EMG put, uh, needle EMG potentials, you press on the orange button and once you've acquired enough and you're happy with what, with what you have acquired, you press on the green button to store them. And that will display the analysis in terms of amplitude and in spectral analysis of that muscle that you're studying. So basically these are the most important buttons. Play, pause, acquire, and store. And that's about it for the needle exam. So let's now cover some of the buttons that we didn't talk about. We almost talked about every one of them, but here you see a tab button. This toggles between inputs, that means as you're acquiring potentials, and trace review. You want to go back and see the traces that you've already acquired and stored. Uh, this button here is to move from one trace to the other, and this button here is the escape button. So you're doing something you don't like or you want to stop doing, you just press and it cancels. So that's about it.